characteristic of the Church of Scientology. And this is something they've done for 30 years, 40 years, maybe more. And that is, they hold someone hostage. They kidnap, lock down, hold against will a person they think is a security risk. A security risk is as simple as someone who's going to go to the media and tell the truth. <gasps> to them, the bad public relations, the whistle blowing, is so monumentally bad in the, eye, in the viewpoint of the church that they will kidnap and hold that person and lock them down so they can block their free speech. I know of public, not staff, not civil, public, who've been held against will at the flag land base for months. They had shown signs of deep disaffection and they were forbidden to leave. They literally feel they have police powers over you. Oh, a guy recently told me, he was told, you can't leave till the case supervisor says you may go. You can't leave. And he stayed a day, and he stayed another day, and he stayed another day. And he said to the authority, called the director of processing, I'm leaving. There is no point in me staying. And the DP looked at him in the eye and said, if you leave, I will set security after you. The guy said it was blood curdling. He was public, giving them money. And the way the DFP talked to him was that he was some kind of prey, a deer fleeing. So I will set security after you. I want to tell you the guy never went back to the flag land base ever again. Southern California is home to the largest community of Scientologists in the world. That's according to a church spokesperson. The church, which is famously private and protective of its inner workings, maintains its main base of operations in Hollywood. Its international base is in Riverside County. What allegedly happened inside that Scientology compound near Hemet is being called into sharp focus because of a lawsuit making its way through the courts. Debbie Cook, a former Scientology executive, is being sued for breach of contract for criticizing the church in an email after she signed an agreement promising to remain silent. Last week, she took the stand in a San Antonio courthouse and testified about what she said happened on that property near Hemet in trailers she called The Hole. It was a place called The Hole. The windows were barred. The one entrance was guarded by security 24 hours a day. Debbie Cook, under oath, and on the witness stand, testimony from a woman who was once the face of FLAG, Scientology's spiritual mecca in Clearwater, Florida. Hello, and welcome to FLAG. I'm Debbie Cook, captain of the FLAG Service Organization. Cook led Scientology's largest church for 17 years. I had a tremendous passion for what I did. I had a tremendous um, love for... Um, what we did every day there. Cook testified that in 2005 she was summoned by the church's top leader, David Miscavige, to Scientology's international base in Riverside County near Hemet. Cook testified that's when she learned about the whole. Mr. Miscavige briefed me about it and explained um, that, uh, that he had put about 40 executives of Scientology International into basically locked up into a room called The Hole and he took me there um, personally and someone pried the window open of the office that I was in and two big guys came in through the window and um, Mr. Miscavige said to me on the phone are they there and I said yes they are and he said goodbye and two men physically took me uh, away to, to this trailer area, which is called The Hole. 
Debbie Cook testified she was kept in the hole for seven weeks with other Scientology executives, a place she described as ant infested. I was put in a trash can, cold water poured over me, um, slapped, things like that. And it would one time went on for 12 hours. She um, slapped me so hard I fell, fell over into the chairs. Um, one time he uh, Mr. Miscavige ordered his communicator to break my finger if I didn't answer. Are you kidding me? Like, for more than a year, I slept on the fucking floor and I was fed slop and I was in a building that had bars on the doors and windows. I wasn't allowed out and I was supposed to sit around in there and circle jerk myself into fucking uh, a new state of existence where now I'm suddenly acceptable to Miscavige because I've confessed to, you know, whatever heinous things satisfied his prurient sense of, of right and wrong. And I may, maybe I got a bunch of other people to do it, and that was even better than me getting, you know, if I could get pummel someone else into into admitting shit that he likes to hear. That's even better than if I do it. So, yeah, it's crazy. It's like it's like it is like a the lunatic asylum. It's like one flew over the cuckoo's nest. Nothing really came of that other than Miscavige being convinced that she was about to take off. So the next thing that happens is a whole bunch of people are like auditioned in the hole for the mission to go get Janet. Yeah. Meaning they got, everybody got pulled in like American Idol to have a little interview to find out whether they were in good enough shape to uh, go down and pluck Janet out of LA and bring her back to the hole. And everybody marches in, like all 15 march in at once. The doors are all locked. Janet gets put in one room. Cole, the husband, had a, a, went fucking crazy, started yelling and screaming and said, you know, this is illegal, this is off policy, this is wrong, get the fuck out of here, you guys have no right, blah, blah, blah. And in the end, Kurt and three other people manhandled him into a closet where Kurt sat on him. What Kurt was Kurt weighing like in at about that time? 275 yeah. pounds, sat on him in a chair for about five hours until Janet was gotten out of there. Colm then was sent to the free winds and put in the engine room, kept under uh, guard and kept completely separated from Janet. He could still be there to this day for all I know. But, you know, slowly the stories have trickled out. Free winds is a prison ship away from the prying eyes of the FBI. What do you mean a prison ship? International waters. A prison ship. A prison ship meaning that when someone is deemed a high security risk or is in disgrace with David Miscavige, they're sent to Freewinds and kept. When you arrive at Freewinds, your passport is taken away immediately and locked up in a safe. And you're not allowed offshore. You're just not allowed to go down the ramp and go offshore. So, and, the, and there have been numerous people held against will on free ones. So I've dubbed it a prison ship. There's Don Jason who did that incredibly dramatic escape. He came back and we did some sec checking and uh, began the process and discussed it with Miscavige and he said, I want the guy on the ship. Because if you go to the ship, it's the most secure place in the world because you turn your passport into the port captain. So even if you hop the ship in port, you can't get out of the country without a passport. Jason was the chief officer at the Flag Land Base in Clearwater, a top manager inside the church and a potential threat on the outside. Aboard Scientology's cruise ship, the Free Winds, Jason says he was under constant surveillance and not permitted to leave. For a time, his room was locked. He was assigned to a program of heavy manual labor. Jason soon decided he wanted no part of the regimen. He insisted on leaving the ship. The staff's answer, 
do the program. Get up to the cab and I open up the door and start trying to talk to the guy and they kind of catch me at that point because that's a couple seconds they catch up. They're trying to kind of keep me from not going into the cab. They're kind of blocking me from going to the cab. They're arguing with me. I'm saying I'm going. I'm talking to the cab drivers. They're in an airport. Take me to an airport. They're telling them I can't. I shouldn't leave. I can't leave. I'm, I'm there on the ship's authority, that type of thing. He was locked in a, in a, in a tiny cabin with cameras on him 24-7, 365. If he asked to use the restroom, security were there in seconds. He realized he was under watch. Imagine having a camera trained on you all day and all night, week after week, month after month. Um, and, all, and all he wanted to do was leave. He wanted to depart. Valeska had an incredible story about her lockdown on free winds. Her sister Melissa, another lockdown. So these, these free wind stories, what about Scott Campbell, my dear friend Scott? He was fed Valium and chloral hydrate, a lethal combination that can give you long range brain damage on free winds. And he was prescribed this by a fake doctor. A doctor who wasn't really a doctor with fake credentials. They took me to a place in New Mexico, which was owned by a, a public Scientologist. It was a little ranch in a place called Reserve, New Mexico. They take me out to this ranch, and there's a main house, and uh, then a cabin, uh, which is, uh, there's a big field, and the cabin is about a five minute walk away from the main house. These two gentlemen, uh, Kevin Popovich and Ben Stringer, take me to the cabin. So I quickly found out that uh, anything that I wanted to do that uh, Kevin and Ben didn't approve with would be met with physical force. Like if I wanted to go outside or do something that that uh, they didn't approve of, uh, I was subjected to, uh, you know, painful submission holds or kicks, punches. Uh, wow, they were beating you into submission. Beating yeah, you. it was uh, immediately, I mean, as soon as we got there, that I wanted to do something like leave the room that they wanted me to be in. You know, I was immediately like slammed to the ground, face first, up against the wall with both my arms twisted behind my back and my wrists bent. I can tell you, I was uh, a shadow of my former self. I, and they were body slamming I was in no them. shape to, to resist. And I just spoke to her very quietly and I said, Carrie, these guys are going to kill me. You have to understand the magnitude of this. They are going to kill me if you don't do anything. I didn't know exactly what they had done until after everything because of course they kept this away from each other. But it was like, okay, New Mexico, blah, that was gross. So, uh, you know, Griffey Blythe had to help us get some people there that would actually help A babysitting house is a house used when somebody has a mental breakdown. A public member. A public member. Oh, no, but staff as well. Staff, staff go, it's called type three. Staff have mental breakdowns. There's sleep deprivation. There's messed up mind control counseling. People have mental breakdowns in the Church of Scientology over and over and over. And these safe houses, what you called, these baby, baby watch, is Scientology is embarrassed. It's an embarrassment for someone that claims high, high spiritual advancement to go lunatic. It's embarrassment. So, again, it's secret, lockdown. Very few people know. Osa run the show. 
Office of Special Affairs is a bunch of CO members who've signed religious contracts to be religious and ecclesiastical and actually run the darkest, devious, criminal acts of the Church of Scientology. Scientology believe they have the power of federal marshals to lock you away. And for years, I think the lawyers have gotten them to knock it off now, but for years, years, when somebody did escape, the CO would send a posse, a gang, to go track you down and bring you back. And many people were kidnapped back or brought back or persuaded back. One of the really crooked, deceptive things they'd say was, you don't want to be declared suppressive and have your family disconnect. Come on back and rout out standardly. Do the routing form. Well, guess what happened when they came back? They were often hurled into the RPF. <laughs> or worse, completely locked down. And again, Scientology has mortal fear that their dirty little secrets will be spoken of, whistleblown, and told to the world. Scientology has a lot to hide. I am going to unravel and show the light on these secrets.